Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 36 of Wearables Weekly. I'm your host, Keith Acorn, and with me today are my co-hosts, starting from my left, Aaron Kasten. Hello, everybody. Cecilia Abadi. Hi, all. <laughs> Libby Chang. Hey. Noble Ackerson. Hey, guys. And our special guest today, Steve Matone. Hi, what's up? <laughs> Steve's uh, our guest today, but uh, he's also uh, worked in uh, digital marketing for companies like BBC America, Showtime Networks, uh, Royal Caribbean, and eSurance, and he's an If I Had Glass Explorer, and he currently writes for livingthroughglass.com and googleglassfans.com. So it's really awesome to have you on, Steve. Thank you. It's great to join. Awesome. So uh, we had a week off, so a little bit extra to talk about this week, but uh, let's uh, talk about a couple things that we did. Um, so let's see. Last week um, we had a glass meetup at the uh, AT&T Park for uh, the San Francisco Giants, which Libby and I attended. Yep, uh, Garrett Barker hosted, and it was amazing. It was the, the weather cooperated, and everything went off really well. Yeah, it's pretty pretty perfect game. Like you said, the weather was was awesome. Uh, it was supposed to be rainy, but it turned out to be really nice. And it was our first trip to the to the park. So yeah, it's nice. <laughs> although I don't think we watched much of the game. <laughs> I think we were really just hanging out. But well, well whenever you get two explorers or a group of explorers around uh, together, it's it's very fun to talk and uh, sort of catch up. But uh, the game did go off pretty well. Uh, it actually ended in the bottom of the ninth with a home run. So you can't really ask for more than that. And the Giants won. Go Giants. Cool. But also there was a pretty good turnout. Um, I think we had about mm, 10 people, 10, 12 people. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Cool, cool. And, uh, and the week before that, uh, we had Ivan on to talk about um, a Cherry Blossom Festival in San Francisco, which we also uh, went to and had a pretty good turnout for that too. So it's been pretty fun in San Francisco. And I just want to give a quick shout out to David Lee who uh, sponsored these events with some free G-Pops. So we got a Cherry Blossom Festival in here, which he surprised us with there. And uh, Giants. Go Giants. Cool. Did you guys do anything interesting, uh, glass related? I think yeah, Cecilia. Yeah. Oh, oh, who was, no. oh, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I was going to say there was the, um, the Google Glass um, happy hour event. I guess it was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this past weekend at the uh, San Francisco base camp. So I stopped by on Saturday afternoon. It was, it was pretty cool. Definitely some new explorers, and I got to talk some, to some of the uh, glass guides um, about their experiences showing glass to different people throughout the country. So it was really awesome to hear some new stories. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, I saw that. I wish we could have gone, but um, it sounds like you guys had a good time. Was it uh, free drinks as a uh... The name would imply. As always. Um, but it, I went at noon, so they have some sodas as well. It was a little too early for me to drink. But, uh, yeah, it's, they have such a beautiful office right there. It's always yeah, it's an incredible location. Yeah, it was, it's beautiful. And, Cecilia, it sounded like uh, you said that uh, they were offering these at different locations, like in L.A. and New York as well. Yes, I uh, saw so the post. Apparently, they had them at LA, and a bunch of people in LA was coming as well. Uh, I couldn't make it uh, that day, but uh, they seemed like fun events, and I think they were destined for new explorers to be welcomed and to meet other explorers. Uh, very cool. As I'm sure we can all attest, like you know, the explorer program is, is so much more fun when you find a group to sort of hang out with and explore with. So that's really awesome that they're giving people a chance to sort of network. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, I guess we can jump into the top of the news. Um, so this week there was a um, an update to Glass. Actually, I think the third update in the last week or two. Um, but this was episode, or update sixteen point two. Uh, are you guys all upgraded yet? I am. I just got upgraded. Holy crap! On my way home. So much work. better. <laughs> this is the first time I've actually touched it since it upgraded earlier today. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's, it's not like it. click. Click, click. Yeah, so you know we should talk about that because that was what the sixteen point one upgrade, or was it the sixteen? Upgrade? It was basically everything since I got my new glass version two unit because <laughs> it upgraded like a week later and I haven't used it since then. <laughs> I'll pick yeah, it up and be like, nope, one one, no. both of them. Yeah, so it sounds like right around the time that uh, upgrades XE16 came out, people were complaining about slowness and things yeah. like that, and so they quickly rushed out 16.1, uh, which I guess was supposed to fix that issue, and uh, ended up hurting quite a few people's... Uh, I think, Cecilia, you might have had an issue with that, right? 
I got into the eternal boot loop. I think that's how it was officially called. <laughs> and so basically, you could see the nice animation of class coming up and again and again and again. So uh, it wasn't too frustrating, except that I really tried to fast boot and do a routing of the device. And that took like a whole Wednesday, I remember, fighting the thing. And apparently, there was a, a coinciding issue with Macintosh machines not being able to, for the most part, root glass. So uh, that was something that was reported since November, apparently. And unfortunately, it collided with this other issue. And, um, <laughs> and that was it. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, it's surprising. I, I'm used to thinking of um, Mac as being sort of Google's preferred development machine, so yeah. I wasn't surprised. But um, I, I didn't realize, is Glass not rooted by default? Is there some kind of locked bootloader or something? Um, it's not rooted. So if you root it, you pretty much lose your warranty. So that's what you're risking. But at the point we were, we had no Glass, basically. So everybody was just trying to hack it just for fun, you know. It was a, a good attempt. <laughs> <laughs> So even without rooting, you can still sideload apps and stuff, right? Yeah, sideloading is totally different, and you don't need to do anything very dramatic, and you don't lose your warranty. Rooting your device is supposed to, to yes, to, what, how do you call it, void your warranty, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it does. Uh, so Alex in the chat window wants to know how whether or not it extends your battery life, 16.2. Yeah, well, since I think it just came out too today, recent. I'm not sure anybody can really see. Yeah. Yeah. It's, still, it's still booting. I don't know if any of you that have 16, have you experienced booting? I think no, but you did. Yeah, it, and actually that runs down the battery a little bit more because it power mm -hmm. cycles um, quite often, and that sort of um, chips away at the, the battery life. So. Yeah. I uh, fortunately avoided most of the issues that I was reading about, um, but I am at 16.2. It seems to be very smooth, so um, I guess I'm, I'm set. But I guess we can talk about the features of 16.2, because a couple of these were pretty highly in demand. Um, so the first one was photo and video backup, which um, you know, before, if you had Glass on power and on Wi-Fi, it would automatically back up your photos to Google+. Um, and uh, one thing that I know I was asking for, and I, apparently a lot of people in the uh, Glass community were asking for was a way to manually push a backup in case you're uh, not connected to power. Because sometimes you're out shooting for a day, and uh, you know I, I I feel safer when the photos are backed up, even if it's going to eat into my data plan a little bit or something. So um, they're allowing people to manually back up their photos. It still says, um, by the way, it still says that you have to be on Wi-Fi. Um, I don't know. Oh, really? It's a weird. It's a weird so, message there. It does say if, that if you're not on Wi-Fi, I, I was testing that out today, and you know you're not on Wi-Fi, and and the message at the bottom just says you know you have to be on Wi-Fi in order to back it up. So I'm I'm guessing uh, this is sort of a stopgap measure for people who took uh, an, a large amount of, and this doesn't get reported right. That's why I wanted to clarify. Um, a large amount of photos get queued up, and it takes sometimes a long time to get especially videos up, so you can manually do it if you're on Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Now, we can get some clarification from the actual notes, uh, which I haven't really checked the actual documentation, uh, but on the, the notification, if you're on 4G or tethered through Bluetooth, it actually uh, 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 says that you have to be on Wi-Fi. And some people are still complaining. Like it's a nice feature; people have been asking for it. But some people want to also be able to control that there's no photo backup, mm -hmm. and there's none of it. And uh, it, it seems like are, a few requests. So you so you're saying there's no photo backup at all? No, I'm people saying that some people would like would want, want a feature where and, and in this same feature they could just say no backup. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. So they they just just happy. Sink it. Okay. Google Plus account. That's certainly ridiculous. I've heard that argument before. Um, if you if you have limited uh, the if you have limited space and you want the convenience of having your your device, and maybe we were talking about two different things, but I've heard some complaints that people don't want their photos on Google, mm -hmm. uh, which sounds uh, pretty ridiculous uh, when they argue that they don't trust Google to host their photos, yet they trust Google to. Uh, uh, build a device that they can wear on their face, and they trust Google to provide them their email. I think it's completely ridiculous. Well, my favorite is that those same people will lose their phone and then be furious that they've now lost all of their photos. I agree, and but if, like, in the same at the same time, it doesn't seem like something that you know has to be enforced for the user. It seems like something that the user should be able to choose. And I, the I user does get the option to choose. 
I mean, you well, right? I think right now it's not. I think I think so. you're saying no, you can't stop it altogether. You, know, you have the you you have the option of not having this thing uh, uh, connected to Google Plus and still be able to use it, right? This is an OS. This is kind of like it's basically like saying you have. Uh, a, a cell, you know, you went out and bought a That's Nexus, be a, problem. A, a Nexus Five, and you don't want to use the Google Experience. Well, there are options for you. You can actually, uh, um, you know, flash the device and put a, an alternate device there. If there's nothing available, go well, go build one. That, that I believe <laughs> novel in in a, in a cell phone, you can specifically say yes, I want G Plus, but I don't want my pictures no, to be. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, on a cell phone, uh, Google Auto Backup, Google Plus Auto Backup is part of the Google Plus app. I guess that's the biggest complaint that I would have. I agree, auto backup should be part of the Google Plus app. What if I want to auto backup to my Facebook, or I want to auto backup to Flickr, or something like that? Well, then buy a Facebook um, glass. <laughs> so you don't have glasses. <laughs> but, yeah, I have TTT and be done with it. I, I think for the betterment of glass, it should be able to back up to whatever service. If I want to set up Dropbox and have photos automatically, well, you can back Dropbox, up to the Dropbox. The whole point is that Dropbox needs to build an app. That's the, the point. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Well, right. well I, think, I think even if Dropbox created an app, I'm not sure they could automatically do your stuff. You just have to share or, or disable, or disable the, the Google um, yeah. backup. I think yeah. it would be a, an easy feature to add. People Let are, some people be happy. Everything is amazing. No one is happy. If I could channel my inner um, Louis C.K. Like, just get a different so, device. I have a question. Go ahead. How reliable is posting to Google Plus from Glass for you when you're out and like just on your mobile device? It depends it's, a little bit. I, I mean, sometimes I'll go to my phone and check that it actually got posted because sometimes it might be yeah. 20 minutes or whatever the next time I connect to Wi-Fi before it actually. I think goes. it's pretty good for me. I've I've been pretty successful with that. Uh, for my me, biggest problem with it is when it fails. It doesn't try again. So, like, if it yeah. doesn't post right then, it never tries again, and you never know. You just don't know unless you go look. Yes. It's really irritating. I've only had that problem uh, recently. Uh, I've had a lot of frustration, quiet frustration in the way, by the way, pro tip, if you're an explorer, yes, it's good to vent. You'll notice I haven't vented. I'm actually using the feedback feature, which brings us, brings us back full circle to... Uh, uh, the new features in 16.2. There is a feedback feature yes. uh, in there. Use it a lot. I, I went to use it earlier, and my, my thing crashed before I had 16.2 <laughs> installed. I'm like, I'm looking for feedback because it's going so slow, and I'm trying to get the feedback <laughs> in. <laughs> I was I was like, ah! So when you're giving and, feedback, uh, does does it give you an opportunity to like give some like do you speak it or do you just yeah, tell so you, you and I'm, I don't know what what I'm gonna do or what the reason why I have this ridiculous thing that tethered and I'm failing so horribly at this is that what I wanted to do is sort of show my screen, uh, but uh, yeah, so you just tap the feedback button. I believe you you scroll to your settings. You go to device info and tap that. There is no indication that there is a menu there. That's bad user experience, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's, it's supposed to be native with Glass. All right, so you always tap to check if there's a submenu. So you tap. The, the first option is feedback, which is great. Uh, and you tap that, and you just speak. Mm -hmm. uh, speak your feedback. Um, and it's going to ask. Note that it's going to ask you uh, really, really quickly as it's about to send it to add your email. Uh, to it, so you have the option to add your email in case they need to get in touch with you. I always do, just because I just wanted to what want them to know the jerk that keeps sending feedback. Uh, so. The feedback I've kept sending, I don't know if you guys are having the same issue. Is like I'll I'll start up Google Play Music and the player will crash, but the music will keep playing. That's, that's, that's since day one they've had that issue. Yeah, I think that's a Google Play Music issue because I've seen that on other things as well, not just Glass. Oh really? I think no, no, never mind. That's a Chromecast. It's a good Last Play issue. When I'm Chromecasting, things will lose connection with the Chromecast. Disregard. Yeah, that happens. Not a wearable. Quite a bit. But no. and so you have a zombie. You basically, uh, Steve, I, I use the music app a lot too when I'm running or working out. So I yeah. see what you're saying. There's a zombie card that you can't do anything that gives you the most ridiculous error message that says, you know, uh, stop. You know, you cannot play another song until you stop. The um, the current song or whatever, 
yet you can't stop the other song. <laughs> well, I found a, a trick, though. So I don't know if you've noticed. If, you, if you're using the earbuds, if you unplug the earbuds, it will stop. So that's um, a way to feel it. It's like pulling the earbuds, putting them back in, and then you can start over. Awesome trick. It's a little bit frustrating. It's hard to do while you're running. You're not going to like it. It's so it. hard to pull something out while you're wearing it or put it back <laughs> in. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll just round out this, uh, the, the features. The, the one that people have been talking about a lot, which I think also people have been asking for a lot, was a smarter phone answering, which is, uh, you know, if you're not wearing glass, uh, your glass won't automatically pick up when you answer your phone. Yes. Um, so I've already been appreciating that. Good, good. That is awesome. I forgot that that rolled out with the new, uh, the new feature. Oh, hey, my Hangouts decided to um, switch to the thing that I tapped on a year ago. Sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, that's definitely super useful as I normally have my glass away from my, you know, my yeah. TV viewing experience and I get a phone call and I start panicking. Yeah, There's certainly been plenty of times where hello? I have... Hello? Well, hello? Hello? Oh, oh, hold on! <laughs> <laughs> No, my thing is I hear the the, the I hear glass ringing because it has yeah. a very distinct ring, and yeah. so I have to run, you know, to grab it because normally my phone is right here in the basement and I'm upstairs. It's just, you can switch it on your phone though, right? You can just from the the menu switch it from headset to uh, handset. The problem is the glass device is on my coffee table, um, one flight of stairs away from my phone, so I have to run. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. On your phone, you can select switch to handset instead. Yeah, but I don't have my phone with me. My phone would be on one floor, and I'm I'm closer to my glass, <laughs> but I don't know where the glass is, and you know, it, never mind. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, you should keep one of the two devices with you. That would probably help. All right. All right, and uh, just go, go ahead. Screen sharing now, like legitimately screen sharing. Oh hey, let's see. there's there's the feedback that Noble tried to show us an hour. All right, go ahead. This was like an hour ago <laughs> conversation. Keeping <laughs> things relevant. So we can verify you have 16.2. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. All right, cool. And uh, just to wrap up uh, the issue on 16.1. Um, as far as I. Uh, the ones that were breaking, I think, Cecilia, you verified that the process is right now. Just send it back and they mail you a new one? It is pretty much. Unless you can fix it yourself um, and uh, it's complicated with the Macs, you you have to pretty much, because they are a little, they seem to be a little overloaded, so just keep calling and make sure that you get a resolution on your call. If you're having this problem, just don't call and go back to wait. Just go call and make sure you get a final resolution where they're shipping your glass to you. Cool. And uh, Cecilia, I'm going to toss this next story to you because I think I think you might have put this in here. Uh, new voice triggers. Oh yeah, um, there's been announced by Jenny, I believe, and yeah, there's a lot of uh, new voice triggers, which is kind of exciting because in a way yeah. we know the things that are going to come. Um, you guys want to read some of them, like um, calculate. I think that's going to come handy. Check me yes. in. Check this out. Control my car. Control my home. And this kind of starts to give you a glimpse of what glass in the future can be. Explore Control nearby, my... explore the stars, find the dentist, find the doctor. This is a bunch of them. And it... This is That's pretty specific. Yeah. I'm a little surprised that uh, so, yeah, they would get to the yeah. point of asking for dentist or something. Aren't um, these uh, submitted by other uh, glass explorers? They yeah. are. Yes, they were. Yeah. They approved by Google, apparently. Well, that sucks. They didn't approve any of ours. Yeah, well, check, well, check this out. This, these have some. A lot of these have been there for a long time. I do remember monitoring this page quite often months before we launched, and start a workout was already there. Um, so if you look at like check me in, check me in has been there since uh, October, since the GDK launch. But yes, yeah, but didn't they add a bunch to this list? They, like, they, they added, added a bunch. Got a lot longer. So do, are, do all these show up on that same page, or do they only start showing up once you've used it once? No, these will only show up when the applications are released. So right now they are for developers to know that all of these are available in the enumeration values they can use on the GDK. And only in the GDK, which is the strangest thing, because you would expect that they're both on Mirror and GDK. But I mean, it, 
I don't know. What What do you guys think the future of Mirror is? I, I don't think Mirror has a bright future. I have a I, I, to answer that. I actually have a conspiracy about um, these voice triggers. I think these voice triggers are gonna and and this might actually answer uh, Cecilia's concern as well. I think these voice triggers are gonna be universal, whether they're gonna be on wear or whether they're gonna be on glass. So if they um, there's probably going to be a way to sort of have some sort of universal control if it's just the rumored new Google Android version uh, that's going to have these on the phone itself as well. So that'll, I'll extend my uh, conspiracy to the new commands that Google Now is going to ha actually have as well. So there's out of nowhere, I'm just pu pulling that out. But I, 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 I'm, it would I'm, it would be nice because it would be ridiculous that depending on which device you're talking, you have to remember how to tell it to give you directions or something. And that now with that, the, obviously the glaring uh, uh, flaw with that frame of thought would be, well, what if I don't have my show my pictures app ready for where what would happen well it wouldn't show up on on, on the device so I just argued against myself and won. But Aaron, Aaron was bringing up a, a very valid question of where what's going to happen with Mirror API because it seems like it could it's totally merge with the Android Wear SDK the basic one. I, I don't know. I don't know if if Mirror is going. I don't. I'm not saying they're going to get rid of Mirror, but I don't know if there's going to be much more development of Mirror. Yeah. I don't but know. I view it as uh, I view it as Chrome versus Android. It's Mirror versus CDK. I don't know if anyone else sees it that way, but I, I like Mirror because I'm a web developer, and then it seems so much easier. Whereas CDK, I need to know Java, and it's going to limit the number of developers. So mm -hmm. having an ecosystem. Chrome and Android lets Google hit a lot more developers and get a lot more apps. So I, I imagine they stay together. I have a, another conspiracy around that as well. Actually, that, that was the first conspiracy I wanted to uh, uh, to figure out. All right, now look, I predict mirror apps stay alive for as long as Google Chrome is a thing. And so here's my prediction: mirror goes the route the route of web based uh, APIs that is going to be super heavy on Chromecast, Chrome-related tools. GDK goes the route of Android. They're going to maintain this du uh, dual uh, platform strategy, and eventually both kind of merge together once they're mature enough. Because so, if you know how Chrome works, the the, the very very uh, uh, bottom layer of Chrome sort of borrows a lot uh, from the Android. Uh, under Android's underpinnings in order to sort of build a, a, upon what Chrome becomes. So that's just another uh, crazy prediction, but uh, what what episode is this? This is just market somewhere, and, and, and I guarantee that's where they're going. <laughs> and what are the prices when Google goes public going to be? In that sense, though, then Glass is essentially the combination between Android and Chrome. That is the beginning of the... Yeah. It's well, I want to direct the question to uh, to Aaron because I see you know, for for apps that are very much like notification based or text based, not using a lot of sensors per se, like maybe wink feed. Um, do you, do you see a benefit in going to SDK, or I, I, would you be happy or even prefer Mirror API? Well, so I think we're happier sticking to Mirror because it it, it really works well for what we do with wink feed. Um, the problem with that is is the way they've been iterating for Glass, you don't have access to some of the really cool stuff you can do uh, with Mirror API. And so there's some tricks and things you can do to kind of hack your way into it, but as far as just the basics, like, you know, we're called wink feed. It'd be cool if we could use a wink gesture for something, you know? And Speaking of wink, uh, there's a, a question in the in the list there, and the wink started working really well for me, even through ridiculously thick prescriptions with 16.2. But up until 16.2, mm -hmm. I couldn't wink at all. Well, that's uh, great that news well. because someone in the audience was asking exactly that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's what we got it from. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we answer a couple of these? There's several questions. We got to get the list going. With this one, with 16.2, I mean, it's only been a few hours for me, but like. I, I can wink. I'll have to wink like three or four times, and then it works. But like, just recalibrate. <laughs> well, maybe. I, I feel like I have to recalibrate every time I put my glasses back on. 
I feel like slow blink also. It, I, I turned wink off because it was annoying me, but a slow blink or like a really hard blink would also work for me. Note that it's for, an extra. There's blink challenge people out there. I wish you could get to like a battery like, I like that information. Idea. Like not just how how much battery you have left, but see like how long you've been off the charger, what maybe using basically like the Android. Are you looking for? Yeah. That would be cool. Because I was just gonna say, I think my my glass has been off the charger since whatever, but I don't know how long that's been. So. I feel like they need to increase the like detail of the home screen because time is cool. I like the simplicity, but like let me see the date. Maybe let me see my battery. Mm-hmm. I agree. Oh, battery would be very nice actually because right there's, now there's you have so to go all the way over to settings. You yeah. Can, so it's it's you know. I Show me know. the battery icon and, and a percentage. I, oh my and I literally decide how to use glass depending on the battery. Like if I'm under you know, 30, 40%, I'm not going to do navigation. But if I'm in 90%, maybe I'll do it. So, so having that from, a, from a user experience, user interface standpoint, you guys are reinventing a cell phone. No. Yeah. So Sorry. you're asking for a start screen, weather widget. No. I just I want notification bar. on my initial opening screen and not have to scroll way far, you know, to the, to the, the ex- ex- exactly the furthest point to one side that I can scroll to find out where the battery, the battery is. I'm sorry, three people talking, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm saying if you have a lot of Google Now cards, which I've started to have a lot of Google Now cards, it takes forever to see the battery. So yeah. certain things like that. That's I'm not saying to, like, copy Android's home screen directly into Glass. Although I wouldn't mind that. I don't need cell phone, you know, cellular signal or Wi-Fi signal. I don't need any of that. Just give me, like, a battery percentage, maybe a little circle. So perhaps, has, you, like, you know, it's like a dial with the number, the percentage right in the middle or something. Okay. So so perhaps uh, for you, uh, battery is is important to have, but how many people do you think sort of fit in the same? Every single that person. Uses battery, the glass. Glass. battery is important. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm getting to a point here. Trust me, it was a, a, a layup question, but I'm getting to my point. So if, him, if, it's, if it's really if it's really that important, then uh, would it be better to have say a voice command that says, you know, okay, glass, what's my battery like, and have it read it to you? I Is that that's, too, I think that's a little too much effort. That that would be something. acceptable, but why not just? Put a little icon on there. I mean, it's because, got a ton because of it takes space. away from the clean interface of it. Frankly, I get uh, you can make it look clean. Okay, I'm sorry. You can make it look clean still. I guess so. I, I honestly, I like the idea of the voice command. I I think the voice interaction, the audio and voice interaction with class, is by far the best experience. Thank you. I, mean, I, I think that the the prism and the, and the camera actually are what get the weird looks when I'm like walking around. If I didn't have all of this, and I just had that, like, no one would even really know I had class, and it would be like I was talking to her. No. Right. Yeah, so that That's her. a different experience, and I, I definitely, that? like, depending on who, what type of processing you do, like, I, I like my visual. I'm a very visual yeah. person. Some people I'm not, are I don't like talking that much. I would totally miss the screen. No way. Yeah, yeah I think I think as far as the, the voice, it, it's helpful when you need to enter a lot of text, or if your hands really are full, but otherwise I'd prefer to have visual stuff, too. Or if there's not a crap people around I just around I you. finally saw the movie Her, so I can actually speak on this now. <laughs> I'm glad you saw it. <laughs> interacting with, with, you know, just by voice, as, as, you know, for anyone who's seen the movie or seen the trailer for the movie, you know, just having, seeing people interact uh, just seemed very, very different. Was, you know, just something that wasn't sort of normal. Even though people walk around with uh, Bluetooth headsets, it seems mm-hmm. like not, it never really got uh, became a social norm. You see someone talking to themselves. It is awkward seeing t- somebody talk to themselves. The thing is, yeah. the day the day we talk, remember we're going to be talking to smarter and smarter and smarter machines, so it will get to the point where you, you know, you have to talk to the machine because that's where... No, no, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying we shouldn't talk to the machine. I'm just saying it just has, it's been, Bluetooth headsets have been around for years, but it's never, be, it's, in my opinion, hasn't become a social norm. There is a value. Right. That's what I'm saying. There's, that's where the value comes in place. Every new technology that is hard for people to adopt has to have a huge amount of value added I, in people's I, life. I, and I, I believe 
we're going to have that value. Very I'm soon. kind of I kind of agree with Noble though. I feel like the people I'm not talking about the value though. Yeah, value is very related with You're how talking much about the, like people. social acceptance. Yeah, but there's a direct relationship between social acceptance and the value that a device brings. If you're a simple Bluetooth device, I mean, yeah, we're not going to accept you. But if you're bringing me, if you're making me smarter right away, you know. Maybe well, there are guys have seen the dash. The dash is yes. Uh, Kickstarter is not coming out for like a year now, so I'm I don't know. Those are discreet. It's just headphones, but it's a computer. It's not just a Bluetooth headset. It's very similar to what they show in her. I with Google now, like I want my computer to talk to me. I'm not I'm not really talking to it as much, right? So it's more right. of a listening rather than a speaking. But then even. Having a headset, like no one's staring at me when I'm just walking down the street. But then, if I need to, I can say something to it, and and it's discreet. So there is still on. something socially awkward about talking hands free. I, I kind of agree with Noble on this one. There's something very strange about it. Um, I mean, even I mean, for me, even the girl who sits next to me that has a headset that's talking on the phone, you know, I can't tell if she's talking to me or if she's talking to somebody on the phone. So I think I, I see where no, I see where you're coming from with that. Um, I, I, again, I think it might just be something where we have no idea who they're, you know, whether or not they're engaging with somebody else face to face. Or I, I think maybe when uh, when the computer can be actual can actually engage you back mm -hmm. when it reaches that level of sophistication, and nothing's there yet. S -s Siri's That's not right. there. Google Now is not there. Like when you the, can actually Facebook, engage yeah. with, with... I think even more than the con confusion, I, I, I feel like it's a bit of noise pollution. If people are talking a lot, like you just mentioned, people talking <clears throat> on the phone near you, Libby. Like, I, I have some coworkers that that's their job. They talk on the phone all the time, and it just gets really annoying to have to listen to, like, them talking all day long. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I'm on the, the, the bus or something, I, I don't really want to hear, like, eight different half conversations. That's exactly my point, Keith. Uh, it's, it, so to, yeah. to counter Cecilia's point about the usefulness of this, I could always argue, and you may be right, I don't know. I don't know everything. But I, I do know if what you're saying is true as far as the, the usefulness of you know uh, an ear-only device, it would have caught on by now because people would have found use for it. There's, there's a lot of use in a hands-free uh, a device when you, you know, rather than having to pull your phone out of your pocket every no, time. No, there's not enough compared to you need. That's the point. You need like ten times more value, and it will come eventually. We've developed. I, guess, I, 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 I think people sometimes don't want other people hearing what they're saying, and so sometimes they'd rather send a text message or that's send a true. chat mm -hmm. message or send right. something where nobody else except for the person that's trying to talk to you knows what's going on. Right. You still can't send a text message with glass. I, I'm really just specifically talking about glass, right? Like, right. I'm getting a lot of feedback at my office lately that this is awkward and I look weird when I'm doing this, staring at the ceiling and, and you yeah, know, I'm just staring at the ceiling. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, like, like, you're just screen on and, yeah. <laughs> I can't just look forward because the display is usually, like, on my coworker's yeah. face or something, so I look up and people think that it's awkward. I mean, we've developed visual computers much more. They've been around since the beginning of all computers, so the display is much more advanced than audio. I think that's like what Noble was saying. Why, why isn't it catching on? It's because audio computers, audio-only computers, haven't been developed. You know, like Google Now is what, a few years old? Uh, actually, that goes to what Cecilia is saying then, so... Yeah, I think you're more with me. And actually, I was uh, interchanging some posts in G Plus with uh, Steven, and I was impressed with the way he's kind of internalizing the future, uh, which is voice is the new touch, I believe. And Steven was saying, like, yeah, I want to talk to my door and say, he had great examples. Uh, like, so I want to talk no, to my door and say, are, oh. You, that is 100% correct, Cecilia. Talk is Star Trek. That's how we should use stop, talk. Not for everyday interaction. It should be... Okay, glass. Open the door. Okay, glass. You know, get me directions to here. It's very Start functional, the car. and it's what excellent are for that. Had, Steven? Yeah. But I don't think it's like this. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have this car like her. I don't think that's really well. That's far. That's never gonna really too far. reach social acceptance. Maybe in 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 the future, but Someday. short term, I agree with Star everybody. Trek is where we're headed. <laughs> Go ahead, move on, because. 
Uh, this has been a really good conversation. I love that. <laughs> uh, what if, I mean, we're talking about audio computers advancing as I think robotics are also advancing. So now we're going to talk to our cell phone that's actually a human being sitting next to us. That's going to be kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll round up the uh, the glass news with a uh, with, with one device that uh, sort of was interesting. Although I don't know how many of them were actually available. This is the glass light. Did you guys see that? Yeah, that was awesome. So it, it's wait, wait, it let's has talk about thirty dollars. Let's though? talk about it. It's too much. It was thirty dollars. Did anybody? It, I let it survey. Cecilia, did no. you think the glass light at thirty dollars? <laughs> At nine dollars was really going to be a great product. It's at nine dollars, maybe at thirty, I didn't buy it. I tell you, I didn't buy it. I think anything under ten dollars, it, it would have been worth. But honestly, I can go to Home Depot and get a flashlight for five bucks. So, have any of you seen anybody who who actually got one of these yet? Um, I saw many people on G Plus that said they got it. Yeah. Russell got his today and said it was terrible. Yeah, I saw his post and he said it was really bad. I was I was having fun in his comments, but yeah. I, what did you expect? It's a it's a first off bad concept. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mounting it uh, right at the uh, at the uh, the charge port is a terrible idea. Right. It needs to be out in front of your cheek. Otherwise, everything's just reflecting right here. Well, and it's it's shining into your eye is yes. the thing. So I really think it should be a battery that can charge your glass, mount on the other side, and like is way up here and shoots out. Wow. That'd be interesting. That would be interesting. But yeah, I mean that's why you know the the headlight the headlights work really well. But this just mm -hmm. no. no. But honestly, terrible. it is like an awesome feature. Like I mean, I've been in places in, outside at night, and I'm like, okay, glass, turn on the lights. You know, yes, like, glass we, needs a light. I've got a question. Not, yeah. Do we know? We've talked about that before on this podcast. I think that a flashlight. Uh, Accessory would be a really great accessory. But. Hold on, did, did we do we know who built this? Because I've got some free. It's Ada. Uh, it's Ada Fruit Industries, which I think oh, I know ones that do raspberry. Also, food, right? I don't yeah, know if Ada raspberry Fruit pie. knows about this show. I doubt they do. They should be ashamed of themselves. This is this is what can be done with this. Thing. <laughs> this is actually a very brilliant piece of uh, work. Only it's being used wrong, like many other ideas. And I'll give them free. I'll I'll give them free advice. This isn't what they've invented or what they've built isn't a flashlight. It's actually a very unique answer to something that people who don't know anything about glass always ask for, and they will have a market. If they were to change the command from having uh, uh, it sort of turn on just a, a, a light that sort of shines on your cheek and in your eyes, and just rather have had it trigger same LED or a different color of the LED whenever the camera was on, some people would be completely muffled and have nothing to say regarding not knowing when glass was recording. And they would make a mint selling this thing as an answer to a problem that uh, uh, Google apparently has, which I don't agree Wait, with. I disagree with that. Yeah. I, think, I think that, Noble, you have a lot of great ideas. That's not one of them. <laughs> oh, well, I think it's a great idea, but people who are concerned about the glass camera being on typically don't know anything. Just look at the and, and they're not going to know any better. Think, yeah, yeah, they're not going to really pay attention to the color. They're just going to grab it off your face. It already glows right here when it's on. That's what what you, is a little glow over you, here going to matter? Look, it's glowing. Because, I'm not going to argue it's a good it. idea. I'm just saying that this is for somebody who doesn't know anything about it, and they're asking for an LED on the device or or, or sirens to be tur uh, to be going blaring. <laughs> well, See, that's the problem. Is that's a great idea. These people don't know anything about it. What, what's going to have them learn anything about this LED? They're, They're not going to know anything about the LED, period. Okay. I, I, think I don't even, know whether even sure having that as an option makes it feel like not having it is supposed to be wrong or like you're feeling right. like you're wrong. It, it's that's, just okay. That's that's fine. It's a sh bottom be. line. Ada Fruit Industries should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> Why? Because they put out a piece of junk. It doesn't even look like it's not a piece of junk. It looks poorly assembled, it looks cheap, and then they charged $30 for it. I don't care if they made the raspberry pie. That's a joke. Yeah, it was, it was, that funny, was it's insulting the to the consumer. Raspberry pie. <laughs> Again, <laughs> for five more bucks, you could probably buy a raspberry pie. Oh, you Seriously. could buy a raspberry pie for five more dollars, yeah. But come on, that was terrible. I... I, I I mean, I'm not a rat. I'm not an I'm on your customer, side. So I don't really care. Make but. this thing, you'll get a lot of press. It won't sell, maybe. It won't sell five units, but it'll get a lot of press. 
uh, from uh, uh, sites like Gawker, and, yeah. and they may all buy it because they love talking about this kind of stuff. And that's it makes all me laugh okay. even less. I do agree it's a great device. I'm not saying it's a, it's a great device. I'm just saying if if they really wanted to do something that that solved a problem. Uh, for somebody who doesn't know, there is a solution out there. I'm just offering a solution for somebody who thinks they know the solution to the problem. And if you read every single blog or a comment from, from people who don't know, uh, you'll see the same request. Put an LED siren on top of the thing so it blares every time somebody records. Hey, if they did it for publicity, they should be even more ashamed of themselves. Well, the thing is, I feel like another explorer, and I, I'm, I know I've seen this on Google Plus somewhere, another explorer built this Several months. Oh, here it is. I yeah. got it right here. Um, thank you uh, to uh, Steve Albright for giving me this link. Here it is. I will share it with the rest of you in one of these chats somewhere. Here we go. There's a chat. Um, he, uh, an explorer made it. And so respect to the explorer, that's cool. It's when Adafruit Industries decided to sell it that I have a problem. <laughs> what is the market for $30? It's such a piece of crap. If you're going to sell something, make it not a piece of crap, or if it is a piece of crap, sell it at piece of crap prices. Yeah. I feel, although I feel like they did kind of bought the idea from this explorer. Why would they buy the idea? Um, so for the, for the kids listening at home, the, the Glass Explorer is... Do you, do you know what Ada King does? Yeah, they do Raspberry Pi. No. That, yeah, that's the only thing I know that they do. All right, so if you, if you look at the... Uh, if you look at their marketplace, that's exactly they do, what they do. They do more than Raspberry Pis. They do like the you know like the wearable little sensors you can sew into clothing and stuff. Oh, and okay. Exactly my point. So yeah, they do all sorts of like hack. They do like hackable hardware. It's cool stuff. What would you cool. call this then? It is hackable hardware, but it's so, a piece of crap. Have hackable you seen? Have you seen that was way prices? overpriced because everything in Google oh, Cloud, okay. or everything oh, involving yeah. Glass right now is way overpriced. That That's like the trend. It's like it's hey, a better price than eighty dollar earbuds. I'm we sorry. know that we know that these explorers <laughs> don't mind being good bone. point. So everybody should bone the explorers. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go. Earbuds that don't work on anything else is the is the biggest uh, issue for me. So a thirty dollar flashlight is actually a pretty nice. Price. Thirty dollar flash flashlight. Everyone loses their mind. Google's charges two hundred dollars for frames. Yeah, it's fine. Well, no. actually, most frames are no. about. I have complained and made fun of the fifty-dollar wool bag on at least six or seven episodes. <laughs> this is true. Yes. Eighty seventy-five dollar headsets. Give me a freaking break, Google. Come on, you're a billion-dollar <laughs> company. Get your shit together. And this is why nobody at Google likes me. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, let's do a little uh, lightning round for a couple of other devices that made the news. Um, so. Uh, LG, I guess, I don't know if this is rumored or confirmed, but uh, LG is definitely doing an event on uh, May 27th, uh, and people think this is going to be when they announce the, um, the, uh, the G-Watch, their, their Android Wear-based watch. Um, anybody interested in this one? I guess considering that the Motorola is around the corner as well. I feel like it looks like just another health tracker. I don't think it does much more than... Oh, the, no, the G, the, this is actually one of the first Android Wear device, so it's going to have that... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, okay. I'm thinking of... It's the, it's, I actually met the first person today who thought that the, the LG looks better than the Moto... Uh, oh, yeah, I'm your second. Really? really? Yeah. Oh, that's because you love the square screen. You hate the square. Well, I hate the circle, let's say yeah, that. Yeah, you hate the red. It's not that you love the square, you hate the circle. Oh, impressive. It's, it's too retro. I don't usually like retro. I like forward. I, I, I agree with I the like idea that square makes more sense for the form factor, but I just can't get over how nice that, that the Motorola <laughs> one looks. <laughs> it just looks so nice. This is the first circular LCD that I've ever seen. I mean, have you seen a circular screen on any other device? Why do you why do we want that though? I don't know. It's impressive. I don't, I don't know. I think a circle just fits it. I don't. I think, I think it's just, either I, one. I think the circle is totally aesthetic. It's not form follows function. It's definitely form. It's a step back. It's going back to first. analogic watches that should be buried twenty years ago, and they still alive. I, I know what you're saying. It's like a, It's like the iPhone style where they try to make it look like wood when it's really a glass oh, yeah. screen. It's weird when it's a circle because there's no clock spinning around it, but 
That being said, there, there's more than just a circle. I think Motorola also looks very well finished, like clean, mm -hmm. nicely done. Uh, the LG, it's a little hard to say. It looks a little cheaper, maybe material. -wise. I feel like with a circular screen, though, you can't really maximize the data that goes on the screen. So in that sense, I do see wow. where a square smartwatch would be. That's what's most impressive to me. That how are you going to make a responsive, like, uh, Application that actually responds down, down, down to a circle. Yeah, that's, like, yeah. Here, herein lies the problem with that logic. You is put that, all your information in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, that's what we do on Google Glass. Look at look at almost every slide on Google Glass. It, it's focused on well, the middle. No, it, in it Google Glass you can use. In Google Glass you can use the whole thing. You can use it for design purposes, for details. But, but like for but example, pull, look pull at a wink feed screen. card here that on would Glass. Fit perfectly. And to, 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 to get this WingFeed app onto a circular screen, I mean, you would have to read your wings. Wings. Okay, so my whole point, though, <laughs> is that... WingFeed would not work. <laughs> uh, Steve, Stephen, you, you're, you're saying how do you create a responsive app, and that's the problem where people start thinking that they would sort of port existing apps for different form factors onto a new form factor designed for the Motorola watch. Right, uh, but this is going to be a one platform for multiple devices, so a developer is going to have to somehow either have parallel processes for both designs or have, have you, to be able have to... You seen the design, have you seen the design guidelines? No, I haven't looked no. at it. Okay, so they have a solution for that. You don't... So for Wear itself... Um, it, whatever you design once will definitely work for every Wear where device. It will just so automatically format it. But what I'm saying is, when you start thinking at, at you know designing for glass and then porting that glass glassware over to a watch, you start having problems. If you design the same thing with well, that we uh, Timothy has talked about at nauseum about you know bringing over a cell phone app for Google Glass, right? You're going to run the same problem when you start um, thinking that whole paradigm of Tablet and PC kind of mentality. You're not. Well, I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of an actual like a, you know design for round design that I've seen, and the only one I can really think of offhand is the Nest. But the way that that's designed, where you know you're actually radially moving the thing, and I mean, so me, I don't uh, think that let is. Let me pull up. Uh, you keep talking. Uh, but I mean, I think I think the layout of of Android Wear is still based on like blocks of rectangular text. I don't think that it's going to be able to like wrap around the you know the, the watch face. Well, the issue is that there's going to be square or rectangular Android Wears and then circular Android Wears. So there has to be a way to design for both. You're going to make one Android Wear app. Right. Right? That's my point. Yeah. And it's it's here. I'm just trying to find the uh, developer resources on here. Yeah. And we wouldn't if we were going to make a and and actually it's, I'm glad you brought this up because we we are looking at smartwatch platforms for WingFeed. You know, we want to be we're we're a wearable development company, not just a Google Glass development company. Right. Um, and so that's something we're considering. But we okay. wouldn't just port the interface over to. All right, so this is this is what it is. So with Wear, the way I understand it, you're actually building within what can be described as a wrapper, right? So that whole there are two ways to design for Wear, I guess. The the initial way that you're going to be able to wear uh, uh, Wear, uh -huh. the way you're going to be built building for Wear is this sort of Google Now interface that you saw in that video in that promo video, mm -hmm. which automatically formats everything for you, so you wouldn't have to worry about that. It's when they start opening up the, 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 the meat and potatoes for the native developers that, uh, Stephen, your point might actually uh, uh, be, you know, obviously they would have to solve that problem before they make it uh, available and perhaps... So is where another Mirror and GDK, like, comparison? Is where... Oh, yes, sorry, what is, is, it is where similar to the Mirror... It, mirror it and glasses like the Google Now interface on where it is in a way, but actually they're both they're both SDKs and they're both Android, so that's the difference. Okay. Hmm. Cool. Um, well, I do hope you're right because I really like that round design and I hope that it's as good as it looks. So, um, moving on. Oh, where and for, for anybody interested in the LG Watch, like Cecilia, I believe uh, the price looks pretty good uh, based on a rumor. I don't know if it's rumor or this is on some documentation. That it was going to be 200 euros, which I guess would equate to something like 200 or 250 dollars. Um, that's actually coming in lower than I think some people were afraid it might get to. Isn't so. euros double the dollar, so it'd be 400? Yeah, it's like 1.3 or something like that. Yeah, it'd, it'd be closer to 300 bucks. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it'll be a one to one. I think uh, they'll adjust for the U.S. economy. Um, and but what what really scares me about that is what the Motorola is going to go for at that at that stage then. 
because they're a little bit more of a premium experience. True, yeah. true. Okay. Um, so another uh, device uh, that got some news. Actually, I had this on here uh, from news last week, but it actually just got an update today. Was the Recon? Uh, oh, some yeah. of us had uh, pre-ordered the Recon Jet. I know I had my credit card charged last June, I believe, <laughs> for a device that was supposed to come out in December. People have been asking, like, "Hey, where is it? What's going on?" I guess they redesigned this thing from scratch or something. And um, anyway, uh, the the update today was that it'll be out in September. So. September. They're going to give us the, the luxury of sending us monthly updates uh, starting in June. And you guys can go to You guys can go to Reconjet page and tweet or Facebook uh, share stuff and get into a you know raffle or something. So you can earn one, win one. I saw someone posting today, uh, Dead Anson, that actually. I saw that. Yeah, that. Wait, I can win a Motorola device? Yes, no, I can win a Recon, recon Jet. Oh, uh, whatever. I don't care about a Recon Jet. <laughs> to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm deciding whether maybe I should cancel that or not. I mean, at this point, initially it was supposed to be out in December. It was going to be one of the first wearable devices. I think it's neat as far as being a specialized device for athletics or ruggedized outdoor stuff, but I'm just not so sure I want to commit that money anymore. You they are nice saying they will cancel because I did it. You got so free frame, Android, right? So it's it's a little like the Omate. I don't know about uh, customized Android devices. They, they're never as polished or developed. Um, that's my opinion. Well, yeah, yeah I agree. But, is it, but are you implying that it's because they're Android? Because I don't think that would. Well, because they're they're not full Android with Google experience. That's so true. they're uh, basically uh, hacked. Hacked up versions of Android that just don't really do everything. No, the problem with the only thing developer I've community that's not before. there yet. I'm sorry. Well, so the whole reason for this, this was their pilot program or whatever. This was supposed to be a chance for developers to. Oh, can you guys still see me? Yeah. Yes. They're loud and clear. Okay, sorry. We went dead. Um, but it was a chance for developers to get started early and, and work on like more of a GDK type environment. Uh, when at the time all Glass had was uh, the mirror. Um, but, I mean, there is no ability to develop yet, so even when this does come out, there's not going to be anything for it, unless they're working behind the scenes with individual companies or something. Are you talking about the no, recon? Uh, I'm sorry, I was talking about the recon? Mm -hmm. was it? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm not so sure what, in September, what we'll be getting. It's, uh, I mean... It's going to be whatever they've designed for it, but there's not going to be a whole lot of No, actually, oh, I, I see what you're saying, um, Keith. They are partnering up. There are partners and in, in other companies building stuff uh, for recon. I know this for a fact. They are requiring partners to purchase their snow unit, which mm -hmm. also uses something called Recon OS, which is, again, another hacked-up version of Android. Uh, so you get the, the big old bulky snow thing, and you'll be able to build your app already. I've seen some nautical related apps um, for people, you know, uh, for sailors uh, that are using Recon and, and, and other use cases. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I think I think we talked to them a little bit and they wanted us to buy their device to get started on it and we decided it wasn't worth it. Yeah, it seems weird. I mean, I, I thought that's what the whole point of pre-ordering was so we would get it early and start working right, on so it. But to play with it. So, I mean, the fact that they're doing all these side deals, but people that have actually already given them the money aren't having access to it. it seems a little yeah. bit odd. What I'm that saying sucks. is people who have given them the, the money actually gave them more money in order to have in order to have the luxury of already building, uh, actually to build applications for it so that by the time we get normal people who uh, get it in September, there would be apps available. This wasn't... This wasn't no, this, we uh, we this, talked to them on an app developer basis, No, yeah. was what I was talking about. And it seemed like if we had, if we agreed to become a... to develop an app to, to port Wink Feed over to... Um, and, and this is conversations with Matt. I didn't speak directly with them. Yeah, so maybe, this is I may be telephoning this, but it seemed to me that if we agreed to buy it, they would have sent it to us right then so we could have started developing That's the, We're saying the same thing, though. That's oh, okay. I misunderstood. Well, and what I'm, what I'm saying is that this pre-order wasn't a pre-order for a finished device. This is the Recon Jet pro, uh, whatever pilot program. Right. It was supposed to be like the Explorer program, which was a chance yeah. for people like... This was the yeah. developer edition. That's how it was marketed it marketed as the developer edition. That's that was, cool. So that's all well and good if they want to have extra developers working behind the scenes, but again, it just seems weird that it's going to be probably a year and several months after they've... Not not just that we signed up, but they actually already took the money. 
And that's just the current projection, right? That's not yeah, even. I mean, they've been guaranteed <laughs> quite, a, quite a bit already. So. Yeah. Uh, the other part of that news was that they have gotten investment from Motorola and previously from Intel. So if anyone was curious, but um, Motorola sort of has an implication of being more uh, industrial. Like this is the part of Motorola that was not sold to Google. Uh, so mm-hmm. they do like walkie-talkies and uh, you know big uh, scanning devices and things like that. Okay, um, let's do one more thing, uh, since Libby happens to have a show and tell for us. Oh, yes. A company called Ythings uh, have released a Ythings Pulse O2, which was a fitness tracker very much like one they had before. It was kind of like a Fitbit, but this one's a little different. Um, in addition to normal step tracking, calorie tracking, it also does a uh, heart rate monitor and O2 uh, monitor, which... O2 is the first time I've seen it in a device like this. So do you want to? Yeah. So it's so I'll I'll be posting a review of it on YouTube uh, later this week. It'll be done later this week. <laughs> when is it? Move, move it. Uh, like get the screen to turn on. Okay. So if no, I down. turn the there screen on, yeah, it's kind of it's kind it's almost. I think they're... Uh, Turn they're, up your... Uh, can, can you, can you your move back a little bit? It's a little out of focus. Oh, is it out of focus? No, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Just going to so keep learning. It does more than the Fitbit, but... Oh, there you go. The That's sensors fine. are not quite as good as a Fitbit, in my opinion. Um, um, like how is the sleep? Do you know... Does it show you, like, deep sleep versus... Um, it does. So that it does. Awesome. But the problem I have with the sleep is that it turns off automatically. Um, when mm. I don't tell it to turn off, so I'm not. I, I don't trust it 100% at this point. Um, it's interesting. It actually the price point's pretty good. It, it's priced at at uh, the same price as a Fitbit Flex. So, 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 so one thing I was a little surprised about was the way it collects heart rate monitor data in O2 data. It wasn't like wasn't like a basis watch where it's automatic. You have to actually do it manually. Can right. You show how so that works? this also doesn't um, this doesn't monitor continuously. I'll, yeah, you know, I'll go into a more detailed review in my. So, uh, but can you just can you just activate it real quick? Uh, uh, think, you kind of it's like, not an easy activation. Oh, I see. So you kind of have to hold on. I have to look at the screen. Yeah, Is actually, it, put it on your fingertip. Was the difference was it's not collecting it here when it's when it's no. On, so it it, it, so to activate it, you kind of have to. Okay, so that turns it on, and then in the back there's a there's a button in the back that you pr- you place that your finger right. on. I so like it, it kind of takes just a momentary blood pressure measurement and an oxygen uh, level measurement, but it's it's not doing it continuously. Mm-hmm. Is it a wristband or how do you how do you so use? It? Yeah, there's a couple of different ways you can wear it. I've got it on a so I've got mine on a wristband. Um, there's also a belt clip that you can have. And it's actually, I mean, the comfort-wise, it's pretty comfortable. Um, I was going to say, because even the, sleeping with it, I was yeah. pretty happy with it. The app Jovan is very comfortable. That, that, that to sleep, particularly, even with keyboards, it was so uncomfortable. Yeah, it's, so if you, see, I have the, I have, oh boy, I have the Jawbone on, too. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, that, honestly, things on my wrist don't really bother me, but I think it's because I, you know, I grew up wearing a watch. So, um, unless it's a really, really big watch, like the basis kind of bothered me when I had that on because it was, it was just huge. The gear is pretty big and it doesn't really bother me. Like, yeah, it bothers me so. way less than what um, the app job on would bother me for some reason. I don't know why. As long as we're all showing off, I've got the basis as well. Um, on my <laughs> wrist, is not quite as bulky as it is on Libby's wrist, but um, I like that it's collecting that heart rate better all the time. It just doesn't do the O2 stuff. Have you guys heard of the, the new one? It's what called the Transparent. <laughs> <laughs> it's so super light, you don't even notice you're wearing it. Yeah, I have the nice. uh, Omates, the Omates oh, Smart. I've been a, a strong supporter of them since the beginning, but it's like a love-hate relationship. They uh, they make you hate them, even though it's, it's, it's an Android, but it's not a full Google Android. I've had a lot of trouble getting Google services on there, and I would never sleep in this thing. It's, no. It is huge. It's heavy. But I do wear it every day. Um, I know. I a flappy bird on there. So, <laughs> I know with Omate, it, it's not exactly their fault that they don't have the full Google services, but I, I understand where you're coming from, too. It does make it kind of annoying. For me, the Omate was, was huge exactly on my wrist. Fault? Well, it's, I think it's more Google being stingy than Omate reaching. No, it's Google mm-hmm. sticking to the rules that they set. Yeah. That's possible too. Um, I think I, I know when Omate had first reached out to them, 
they didn't have any rules regarding a smartwatch. The only rules they had was was mobile. Well, well, it was, it was a minimum you have to give Google some resolution. I mean, exactly. Google wants people using their apps to have a good experience, and if they think that you know the Gmail app doesn't work well on a, a really small device like that, they're perfectly within their rights not to approve it or not to approve it for free yeah, or whatever. Yeah, Google Apps. Like I got Gmail to work here. Uh, Gmail looks great, and I can read my email perfectly. I've had an issue getting Google Plus working and Google Now working, um, but Gmail is great. So. I honestly haven't had any issue with the apps that I've been able to get running on it. Um, so the, the thing is, the keyboard will open up and will just cover up the whole screen. So <laughs> yeah. that's. that's I, the, I was. I remember thinking even my if phone it does that like, too, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's in, it's kind of like always using your phone in landscape mode. Yeah. <laughs> I know whenever I was using Neomate and trying to type a word, if I could get a four-letter word like on the first try, it was like big celebration time. It was. Very <laughs> I got the uh, Google keyboard on, and so using swipe or gesture typing is actually pretty awesome. Um, so I, I feel like gesture typing is actually pretty good. Yeah, it's ex you gotta be you gotta have really <laughs> fine control. Awesome. But, uh, okay, it, the, I've I've you know you guys know where I'm with. You know, a full Android experience on a watch. It's not. Stop it's it. Silly. It's not supposed to be. It's <laughs> never going to be. No. That's the reason problem. why is so that I, I can have a wearable companion to glass. That's the. That was the dream. That's what I wanted. Uh, I, and it does have the 4G chip in there, right? What's that? Does it have well, a? 4G you put a SIM card in it's it. It's a 3G yeah. SIM card. It's it a 3 That's pretty awesome. That's worth. Yeah. AT&T or T-Mobile in the U.S. should work with it. I'm a Verizon customer, so I haven't tested it, but other people have said it worked. 3G, I don't know if I could stand going back to 3G. What would the battery be like? Anyway, so I do have a question for, for Libby, though. So mm -hmm. you mentioned it's not as accurate as Fitbit. That's my Fitbit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if very... my Fitbit is accurate either, but I will say this. <laughs> Maybe the Fitbit's I, not I will say that Fitbit is very close to Jawbone. So okay. the two numbers are probably, I mean, it's it's about a 5% difference, I would say. With this, it's like 30%. Like, wow. yesterday, I think my Fitbit registered 14,000 miles, and it registered 10,000 miles on this one. Or 10,000 steps. <laughs> wow, I was going to say, awesome. you are moving. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, yeah, so yesterday my Fitbit registered, registered 14,000 steps, and my jawbone was somewhere close. Was you okay. wear all three of them all day? I do. I do. <laughs> that's how I. That's how I. That's how I roll. Uh, you're amazing, Libby. This, I will this say, is how I, I, do I, trust this. I know the Fitbit is completely off, and and so that sort of puts the question: the accuracy of of uh, what's the other guy? What's the new guy? The Jawbone? No, no, no. The new oh, the the new uh, what we things pulse. Okay, so the oh wow, it is by the same the same guys that do the the scale. The scale that I was trying to convince my wife to buy, but she said no. Um, so I I used to run. I don't. I've not done it in about a month, but I used to run every single morning for the last two years. Um, and with my super, uh, Omate like Garmin watch mm -hmm. that has pretty much probably has a satellite station in it. Um, and it, it is the most accurate, based on reviews, the most yes. one of the most accurate. And I used my to put it against them. my Fitbit, which, by the way, if you, for the uh, listeners out there, if you ever are we going to interview Stephen, by the way? Yeah, yeah, we're oh. going to go long. I, think. Um, <laughs> I guess we should get to that. <laughs> if you ever lose your Fitbit, yeah, I'll just stay here. Though. I uh, forgot to bring my charger, and I'm at 26 percent. So let's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't uh, bring your uh, if you if you ever lose your your Fitbit device and you are very nice and polite, they will send you a new one. And I was very very happy uh, with the support over at Fitbit. I lost That's mine nice. during my race in 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 Miami, and and someone one of you guys or someone advised me to just contact them, and, and they did. I've heard that pretty good support from them in general, and that uh, is that even is really when I, even, impressive. Even when my Fitbit was crushed at my own fault, um, they they offered me at least a discount of a new one, so that was nice. That's that's amazing. Cool. Yeah, yeah really that's that's support. awesome. That makes me almost want to support them, but I don't care enough to do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. So uh, let's go ahead and skip the rest of the news because what would really be nice is to talk to Steve about what you're working on. So I'm gonna toss it over to Noble. Noble, sort of our interview specialist. Or Libby. Or we can do it all. We, everybody can talk. Everyone can interview. 
I'll say we both know Steve. So, yeah. so, so I'll, 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 I'll throw out a first question. Uh, so, sure. so you've been writing recently for uh, a couple of different places, uh, Living Through Glass and Google Glass Fans. Um, when did you get started uh, writing? Is it mainly because of Glass or it's heck or what? It's mainly because of Glass. Uh, if I had Glass, I'd lifelog everything was my winning post, so I really tried to dive into it. The fact that uh, Derek Ross and Chris Jenkins had built Living Through Glass with uh, that domain name, I was like, oh my god, that domain is like what I had posted. I reached out to them and they were they were uh, cool with letting me write for them. So um, I've been on Living Through Glass the longest and then most recently on Google Glass fans. I'm just getting started with them. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think being a glass explorer for me was mainly about sharing the passion of uh, wearable computing. Um, and so I, I find that blogging is just, it's the way to do it. I, I'm really, I really want to start blogging to the people who, like the glass haters is, is my goal. I want to blog and make glass haters love it. And that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of, it's like, it's, it's really difficult because most of them come in and just they have already have preconceived uh, ideas about what it is. Um, you know, I, honestly, I, I point fingers back at the, uh, the titanium headband that Cecilia is showing off right now. It, it's like the titanium headband makes glass look so techy and uninviting. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, but I see, you're right. If it were glasses, I, I think we would have gotten past it a little bit. It's, yeah. it's just yeah. an awkward pair of If they're going to hate it, they're going to hate it, man. This is just like the camera bringing back that little flashlight. Yeah, there. but why would I want to wear glasses? I have way better vision than Noble. Why would I want to wear glasses? Well, but so, okay, so then in that sense... It's, it's been a while since I threw that one out there. Iron Man 3, which I'm sure everyone here has. Iron Man 3, Tony Stark is wearing his own Google Glass, and it was an awesome design. How did Marvel? That's, that's the thing. So it's it's super subjective with these things. People sort of it's an echo chamber, right? If someone puts on something and someone says it's cool, and a not a, notor a notable person says it's cool, it's going to be sort of repeated and repeated. If it's universally hated, it's going to be universally hated. Uh, that's the thing I liked about that specific design. That like I'm saying, of course, they're subjective. It looked cool to me personally, but like what what it was was it was a strap around the back of your head. And just the display came across the front, so you only see the display. Um, right. Are you serious? serious? Yeah, but then he, he can't lay on the bed and, and just sort of. Oh yeah, okay. There's a lot of practical <laughs> things. <laughs> like, oh, not wait, not industrial I, I, I here. Here's the image search. Maybe you're not remembering this correctly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not trying to be rude, but. No, no. I will image search it faster. Because it, it's got like these weird like things on the no, side it's on one side. It's got me. this big thing that comes around the side. I it mean, actually reminds me more of the thing that you use, Cecilia, uh, at the at the um, South by Southwest thing. That thing that it looks like a green. scouter. That's okay. what it looks. Like. It is a lot like the Neuro Sky. It, it oh. is a lot like this. Or like the Busics. It's oh, a little bit like the Busics. It's a scouter. It's a freaking scout. His power level is over 9,000. I mean, it's a scouter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, um, um, Motona. This is your period. This is your But time. ultimately, this is about, uh, like, I I'm trying to write to talk to people about what it is to use wearable computing. The, the thing I get the most as a glass explorer is why. It's like, you know, I think Google Glass is awesome, and then they're just like, why? You know, why Why do you need a computer on your face? Why do you need to have, like, your emails thrown into your eye? Um, so that's kind of what I'm trying to do is, is log a lot more about why I use it, um, how I use it. Uh, that's really what Living Through Glass is focused on is, is what it's like to actually live with Google Glass. I know we've we have a lot of articles up there about development and all that catering to the explorers, but um, I'd really like us to start focusing more on uh, just what it's like to live with a wearable system. Um, I know we're all extremely passionate about just all of the different sensors and all these different things. Uh, you know, my there, you go. there it is. By the way, Stephen, you. What's you failed to mention that they're living through the Alex. member on this panel, but I'm not going to hold that against you. Um, I got a question for you, and my questions are normally retarded. Sorry for the retarded Americans. I'm so sorry. I didn't say that. Um, Jeez. 
I am. You know, Noble, it's a good thing nobody watches this show. You'd be in big trouble. I am. I am mentally ill today. All right, so. We had more than ten viewers. Listen, um, you okay? You are king of glass for a day. What feature would you? Uh, what would you do first, and why? Well, I kind of tapped into that a little bit before. If I was able to build my own glass, and I, I hope in the future glass is much more modular. Like I could say I don't want the display, or I could say I don't want the camera. Take all those pieces off. I'm actually like talking to um, another wearable company. Um, that's uh, based out of the UK called uh, Blocks, and they're they're making a new uh, smartwatch called Blocks. Chooseblocks.com, and it's basically like each link of the wristband of your watch is going to be a different sensor, a different uh, component. Um, Aren't they the ones that did the like the, uh, the originally like the, the Project Aura? Wasn't that called Block? Is that the same people? No, no that's uh, Blocks. Oh, is this a Kickstarter uh, project by chance? This one is just blocks. If you go to chooseblocks.com, you'll see it. It's a smartwatch. Um, but it's a smartwatch where the screen is a component. You could say, I don't want a screen on it. I just want to make it a fitness tracker. So I'll get a bunch of links that will let me make it a fitness tracker. It's, it's very similar to the phone blocks or the Project Aura, but it's, right. it's, uh, that's basically what I would want to do with glass, is make it modular. I honestly, most of the time, I would take the prism off this entire like movable uh, piece, the camera, the prism, and then I just have cool uh, black hipster frames, and and I'll still hear Google now telling me, you know, you've got a, a meeting or you've got an email. Please read it to me and all that. No, you know, that's actually a really interesting idea. I love uh, the idea. Just, just, just popping yeah. this little section off. Hmm. Yeah, but it's you know, especially with the uh, the uh, prescription frames. I mean, this entire component, if it came off. I would have normal prescription frames, and uh, the thing is, I'm sure it's it's a technical um, challenge. Well, so I'm not trying to say that Google should do this uh, before the consumer launch. That well, would the other interesting idea you know, is, you know, that one thing that's going to upgrade over time would be, you know, like a better camera. What like these cameras are several years old now. They were part of the Galaxy Nexus or whatever. Uh, I'd love to get like a better version of it. I mean, if I could just replace this without having to replace the entire glass, that'd be really nice. That is yeah, a good process. Would improve battery life dramatically. Probably. Oh, I'm sure it would. I mean, so I'm going to go to the audience questions. Years old now, two two and a half years old. I actually brought this up at a at the glass face camp recently. It's like I buy glasses probably every three or four years. Um, like frames and whatnot. Maybe if I have to, I'll upgrade my prescription, but I, I don't buy frames all the time. But mm -hmm. I've had like six cell phones in the past two years. You know, so I, I can't imagine wearing like a three-year-old cell phone on, on my face for like, you know, so there's got to be a way to update uh, pieces of glass. And like Keith was saying, you know, better camera, but what about also um, a better processor? Well, yeah, that's what I was just saying. A better it's processor true. would improve battery life. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. frustrating uh, that uh, I, I look up and it takes like two or three seconds to uh, get the time. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't know how the rest of yours glasses are, but like when I... So this, the processor in this is from a company that doesn't even make <laughs> mobile processors anymore. Yeah. Well, that's Chemo, I mean, uh, uh, well, that was the big thing with KitKat, right? They couldn't upgrade to KitKat because they couldn't get the drivers because that company yeah. was not yeah. doing it anymore. Texas Instruments doesn't make mobile chipsets anymore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for, so just, we do have some audience questions. Yeah. Let's um, get to it. Or actually, at least some audience comments. We're uh, running a little <laughs> a long on time. Um, we, can, we can go as long as we want, but maybe so, if there's one directed for Steve. So Christopher Santos stated, a cameraless glass would answer the camera critics, but would take away the soul of glass. How do you feel about that? I don't think that the camera is the soul of glass. It's the marketing. Uh, it's it's mm -hmm. what Google has focused on for marketing. I think it was a mistake. I, I have however many issues with the Google Glass marketing team. Maybe because I've been in digital marketing, I just have different opinions. I don't think that we should have made it all about taking photos first person, swinging your kid around, like that's just one feature and now the public thinks Google Glass is about taking photos and that mm -hmm. is not what it's about for me. It's it's like a very minor thing. I mean actually if you look, I take more photos with my uh, phone 
is I can position it and I can take mm -hmm. an actual photo. It's not about taking photos for me. I agree that in a lot of cases I'm not. I have to decide if I'm going to use glass or a different camera. But there's a lot of functionality that's not just photography related that benefit. Like if you wanted to maybe scan a barcode or do something that's not the artistic benefit of the camera, but actually uses it functionally. And we'll uh, see more and more of that. We'll see more applications that will use the point of view and in the in the camera possibilities and the data recognition. Not so much face recognition, but object recognition. There's going to be awesome things happening because of the camera. I have to position my glass like this. Like, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be walking around the store scanning QR codes like I'm crazy. You know, like it's. But the camera can be used as just another sensor. I mean, it's, that's really what it is. I agree with you, though. It shouldn't be the focus all the time. Like, it, right. it, it has become the selling point. It would be nice to have device. a little thingy that slides. Even software-wise, you touch a thing and sh it, sh it shuts the, the is, shutter. The thing is, the camera, I mean, I don't know a lot about hardware, but the camera's got to add a lot of bulk right here. And the bulk of the prism area is what makes glass awkward. So, I mean, removing the camera could make this much um, Well, the thickness of the prism, I think, so. has to do more with, like, the, the reason this is right. as thick as it is is more it's because... Get it from your eye. Uh, well, it's because they have to, to replicate the, the display being at a certain distance away and the mm -hmm. functionality, but the thickness isn't the camera. The thickness is definitely the display. Okay. So, oh, Jeff Bond had a question for you, too. Uh, why did Steve Matone quit his professional skateboarding career? <laughs> He's referring to my Z-board that I recently purchased... I have the electric uh, skateboard. I feel like I want to buy every electric product. I want just everything to be uh, chargeable. Um, it's the most amazing commuting I've ever had. When I lived in New York City, I actually got to and from work on rollerblades every day. Rollerblading through like downtown Manhattan is the coolest experience. If anyone could do that, if you have the guts to do it, just watch out for the buses and yeah. you go. But like... Z-boarding around San Francisco is extremely fun. Not quite as fast as rollerblading through uh, like Times Square or something like that, but still very fast. And uh, I Probably helps with the hills too, I imagine. Oh my goodness, yeah. That's I awesome. over Pichero Hill. Um, I tried to go from the 22nd Street uh, Caltrain over to the Mission, and I actually had to walk over Pichero Hill and then walk down it. It started, and it just kind of paused, and then I started <laughs> going backwards, and that was pretty <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so, raise your hand if your significant other hates when you wear glass. I don't have that problem. Oh no, scared. really? <laughs> because when we're like, I mean, we're only together when we're at home, and it's awkward if uh, we're just sitting watching TV. Uh, you you know? hate when I wear glass. My my case is kind of different. My husband hates glass when we go out. No. He hates the attention that I get okay. and the distraction. <laughs> But uh, he really likes it in one particular place in the house. I won't, I won't give more details. He likes it. <laughs> 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 Only one room in the house. Everywhere else, no. One room. Brown chicken it is, it is a little frustrating. Um, as an explorer, you kind of take on that uh, whole experience that people are going to come up and either give you trouble or try to take photos with you. But not being an explorer and just being with an explorer it's annoying. Like we were, we just went out to. Uh, I had to get a suit for my sister's wedding. She's getting married in a few weeks, and sitting there getting sized up for the suit and everything. And a random guy just like stops in the middle of everything. I just have to ask you about your glasses, and it's like, all right, I'm I'm cool with telling you, but like everyone who I'm with is not necessarily cool with me stopping everything to like yeah. show you my screencast. Yeah, we uh. So before I got Google Glass, I had we had already started on Wing Feet. I was already working with. With my partners, you know, we we were we were going, but I hadn't gotten glass yet. And we, I took a trip, a vacation to New York with my wife and one of my business partners and his girlfriend. And they, he, he and his girlfriend both had glass at the time. And we're, you know, doing the touristy thing. I'd, I'd been to New York several times for business, but never to just go be a tourist. And so, uh, you know, I'd wanted to take take my wife, and so we went and. We had a great time, but we were. I remember we were walking. I think we were near like Rockefeller Plaza or something like that. And this couple like runs up to to Matt and Amanda and is is asking them about glass. And they stand there for like 15, 20 minutes talking to them about glass. And Heather and I are just like, yeah, yeah. that's that's <laughs> awesome. We haven't heard this story 
37 times today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like, so I totally understand that. It really is kind of annoying when you're not the person wearing it. It's fun when you're the person wearing it. You're like, yeah, here, try it. Check it out. It's awesome, you know? It's yeah. the greatest. But when you're we, not we, that person, it kind of is annoying. And when Livy and I go out, we definitely have to consider, okay, are we just running out real quick, or is this something we can take some time with? Because, yeah, it will definitely add a, you know, it'll double yeah, the time you're going out. Yeah. I love it now, though. I'm like, yeah, here, I'll spend 10 minutes showing you what's up. So one thing that, uh, Stephen, you mentioned, uh, and i will be remiss if I didn't sort of plug something that happened this week. Uh, I've actually put it at too late in the show notes, but um, I happened to visit um, a couple Congress people, uh, lawmakers up on the Hill. I'm in D.C., in case um, you guys don't know that yet. But um, And the whole point was to educate uh, our lawmakers uh, who are going to want to knee-jerk react and, and make laws uh, around a device that hasn't even launched yet. Um, sure. and, and I was very ha I'm very happy to say there's more to come. I'm going to write a, there's going to be a whole write-up about it. I was there with the National Journal, so there's going to be an official write-up about it by the National Journal, uh, and perhaps videos and stuff like that. You'll see, um, you know, Congressman Paulus and, and, and others uh, wearing glass and telling the world about what you know what they've learned um, about glass, and I'm and I'm pretty proud of that. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with my footage, uh, and and why you know my whole goal of being there. I had people wearing suits doing um, sit-ups and stuff with Google Glass That's just awesome. to prove uh, Stephen's point that glass is more than just a camera, and that was my singular focus. And I'm glad I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Stephen. I might have. And that's that's a perfect example. I mean, I I see. Um, not to like uh, build up your head too big, but I see uh, LinksFit as like an amazing implementation of glass. It's using all the sensors and not just wasting time on just the camera. You've, seen, you've seen my head, right? It can't get any it's bigger. Growing, it's growing. It's growing. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's an awesome app, though. That's what I'm saying. I, I like the fact that there is a camera and you can utilize it when Google released the mini games and now there's gesture controls and stuff, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so they're taking the camera to the next level, but I, I'd love to see apps like LinksFit that do more with the rest of class and actually show us that this is a whole computer that does so much, you know, like, so. Yeah. I agree. Jeff Bond has a really great question. Um, he says he screencasts every single day. He uses it to uh, show people crawl spaces in houses oh, yeah, they yeah, normally yeah. would not go into. Uh, who else uses screencast? How do you use it? How often do you use it? If you don't use it, why don't you use it? Um, he thinks it's one of Glass's top three features. By um, the way, right on, and I have to, to tag yeah, awesome on use, with, your, Jeff. Your, with your question, Jeff. Uh, I have to give a plug to um, Alan Furstenberg and Voto, who uh, when when Jeff does his full-time job and, and, and sort of inspects people's stuff, he's able to sort of store, he's able to do some real uh, futuristic stuff with just Google Glass by just sort of sending data directly to a cloud server uh, into a categorized folder uh, with the help of Voto too. So I don't really use Screencast a lot unless I'm, um, you know, showing it off or, or, or dem demoing it. I should use it more. Yeah, I would say I only use it to demo. I only use add add a new app too. I should say, yeah. Just for one other example of a of a really neat app that uses the camera. Um, Nick Moline is mentioning uh, WordLens, which I still haven't really used it because I I've, I haven't been out of the country since I've gotten Glass, but um, I've seen the demos and if you guys have tried it out, it looks like it works really well. So. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, so, so to that app, is, uh, languages, though, that's that's my biggest issue. It's extremely limited languages. Uh, I think it's just like mm -hmm. Spanish, Portuguese, like it, yeah, it doesn't. It, it's only a handful. From an educational standpoint, you could learn other languages. You can translate from English to other languages, Keith. So, yeah. So to go going back to the screencast with glass, one of the coolest things I've seen when you can't, one of the coolest screencasts I've seen with glass is when you're giving a presentation, and you can you use your glass, you screencast to, I think it's your phone, and you took your phone up to the projector because then you could just control it. Here. How often do you use? You can do the same versions? with your with your um, ASM or other. Yeah. yeah. So that I haven't done. I know Det's done it though. Do you That's use the screencast very often, Cecilia? 
I don't know, unless I'm, even when I'm demoing Glass, I don't use it that much. But I, I, I find amazing the use that Jeff found. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's incredible, Jeff. That is that's a really, a really great good use. Idea. Um, I, I don't use Screencast at all. Um, I rarely leave the house, though. Like, I work from home, so it's like <laughs> I don't get opportunities to use it. So I, I don't even wear Glass too. half the time. Uh, being able to screencast keeps a lot of people from trying on your glass, too. Because uh, usually. So I've been doing that for demos lately. I'm like, here, look at my phone, and this is what I see. Yeah, like I'll reach for my phone immediately and just turn on my glass, my glass mm. up, and be like, this is what I'm seeing. And a lot of times that keeps yeah. people from. Uh, or for or glass. a screencast, let them try glass, and I'll control the experience. That's what them. I do, yeah. because some people get very stuck when you give yeah. them glass, so you kind of at least can help them out of places. Mm -hmm. One thing like that, uh, we were talking about the updates, like this latest update t took away video calling, and I feel like screencasting and video calling are somewhat related, because you can use them similarly to share your glass experience. Um, I really hope that they bring that back soon. I feel like they will. I think it's one of those things that it's not working out perfectly right now, so they still have to fix it. And yeah, this, uh, at this point, with all the issues that there were with XC16, we can assume that it was really, really bad with XC16, and they really had no option. Yeah, okay, and they've, so they've implied from all of their other correspondences that it, it'll be back. I, I, I think it'll be back soon. The, the other part is, I know there was just another mass release of Glass um, with the, you know, you can anybody can buy Glass on April 15th. I think they may have taken that one feature out because it wasn't working perfectly, and it, a lot <laughs> of people who aren't used to using beta products are going to go straight to that and be like, this, this is awesome. Yeah, and then KitKat broke everything, so... Yeah, yeah. so it didn't matter anyway. <laughs> I met two explorers who just got their glass with uh, April 15th, and they said they haven't been able to use it. They turn it on, and it starts bootloading. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, you know, this is not glass. This is just the latest version of glass. It won't be like this forever. Because they seemed, like, really, uh, like, upset. Like, wow, I bought a beta device, but I didn't realize it was a broken beta device. Bad timing. Bad timing. Really, yeah. really bad timing. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask my last question, and then, uh, Keith, you can take it over. Um, so, um, uh, Stephen, how are you doing? Great, how are you? That's fantastic. <laughs> hey, um, I don't really care about your answer there. What I really want to know <laughs> is, um, again, I'm an asshole today. I have no idea why. Um, <laughs> you are a sky lover in a charcoal body. Why the hell would you do that? I... I got charcoal because when I first became an explorer, I wanted exactly the setup that I have now where it's the black hipster frames and I thought that the charcoal was going to be almost invisible, black on black. I, I didn't realize that it's you can't hide glass, so you got to just be proud of it. And at this point, I, I wish that I just went with, with uh, actually cotton or sky because you just, just put it out there and show the world that you're wearing it. Um, plus, I think the sky looks really cool. It's a, it's a great blue. I like blue, but that blue is an awesome one. So I wish I could transfer. Um, Let's swap. Well, they let you. I think they'll let you. Will they let you swap? I don't know. Well, I think Noble, people swap. You, you no. Have, no. Right, wait, Noble, do you have a sky that you would swap with me? I have a sky right here. I swapped. You can swap with other people. Noble has I, every color. It was hell. That was what kept me from having my glass fixed faster because I swapped my tangerine with a with a friend. Mm -hmm. So I have was, sky. Oh, really? You don't have the right like. Uh, well, like, you have to gift each other. You have to make sure to gift each other, and we didn't care to do that at the time we swapped, and then it was a big mess when one no, of us... because it's a serial number that you have to you have to do it right. They'll allow right. you to do it. Yeah. yeah, it's even offline, but if you really do want to swap, I'll swap with you. I don't know <laughs> what, how good I'll look with the hipster glasses, so you're going to have to keep your own now. <laughs> yeah, and of course, there's always the, there's always the option of, uh, of customizing. Like, uh, there's no wood grain glass, but uh, I kind of like this one right now. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. That's a really awesome. Uh, That's pretty yeah, cool. I think he's, yeah, I think he's still selling one. this one. I don't know if it has a little king thing back here, but it's it looks pretty nice, and people have commented so, even more than my R2D2 ones. So. Is that a top logo or what is that logo? What is the king? Uh, I think it's just like a, like a chess king sort of a thing. I think it's just something David was playing with. Yeah. Okay. It's a cool logo if David's listening, if he wants to uh, start branding G-Pop. <laughs> That's it from me. 
All right. Well, I guess we can go on to a couple of events. Uh, how's your battery hanging in there, Steve? Wait, I wanted to show you guys something. <laughs> what do you think of this as a launch screen? I, honestly, I don't care about the brightness, the brightness, the Bluetooth, or the Wi-Fi, but everything else, I like it. Yeah, I think you cover think all the bases there. What? Where did this come from? Did you just do this? That's the Android yeah. notification bar on top of the Android. Or uh, much. Yeah, I think it's so it's, Steve Albright shared that it's uh, there's a he's got the link on the on the it. question and answer, but. You can install that. Yeah, I, I would like never go for that. I don't it's know if I'm busy. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but then also the I see there's an automatic or an auto brightness icon which you don't have on Flash as a setting, so That's you don't silly. need that either. Um, All I want is the battery and the date, and honestly, they don't even need to be in the corner. I think that doesn't make sense. Calendar the date right under the time. And I'm done. The I want the date and the battery. I agree. Maybe, maybe maybe once you've proved that you've memorized OK Glass, they can uh, swap. That's you. that's yeah. what I was thinking. That would be the first to go for me yeah. after the the consumer launch because I mean yeah. that's just something that I'm attached. We learn. I'm attached to the OK Glass. <laughs> okay, so if you have the count the official calendar glassware loaded, uh, it's one swipe back from the time, and you'll get the date. Um, Actually, right now mine shows where birthday. it was. That's true. Yeah, birthday. Mine does not show. No, birthday is after. Four, five, five swipes. Mine's two. So if you want to, maybe, maybe you want a really fast swipe. Let me see if I can do it all in one go. <laughs> Apparently, I have okay, no glassware installed on my device right now because it's like five swipes for me to get to the battery. <laughs> It's five to get yeah. to the battery for me, but one swipe to the calendar shows me wearables weekly. It does not show me today's date. I don't know why. Is this the official calendar? Because there's a new yeah. calendar glassware that you have yeah, to Yeah, I installed the new calendar glassware. Uh, I, I'm, I, every day I see the time. It just tells me tomorrow is May. Does that mean you have nothing on your calendar? <laughs> I, I only care more about the battery than I do the, uh, the, the date, because I usually just know what the date is. That's what I'm saying. So, okay. so, <laughs> so speaking of calendar events, um, there is a, a couple of things nice. coming up. Nice segue. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, this Saturday, um, actually, maybe one of you might be more familiar with the specific events going on, but there's something called Glass Night Out, which I believe is uh, a coalition of glass events all taking place on Saturday. I think there's one here in Palo Alto uh, by Trish, uh, one of our, our friends uh, hey. in the Bay Area. Which and, we will be at now, <laughs> since we canceled our flight. Yes, yeah, so we sort of, we sort of uh, are not traveling to Florida like we expected to. So, um, And there's probably some uh, Southern California, D.C. Do you guys know of anything? We have yeah. a lay one for sure. Yeah, we've been. Some of us have, we've been trying to uh, um, help with that. It's a great incentive to try to get. It's a little. The news is a little dated, but this is sort of arose from the whole glass not welcome uh, um, news cycle, which died off almost as quickly as it came around. But it's a great idea to get people together simultaneously. Um, like uh, Keith said, it's it's around. The country, Madison was from Madison, Wisconsin, to the West Coast, the East Coast. We've got got it in D.C. as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all you can say about it. It's a great idea. And I have forgotten the gentleman's name that uh, that proposed uh, J. R. this. J.R. Curley. J.R. Curley. And actually, in, in L.A., I have to say, if anybody's in L.A. area, we have a, a bike ride in the morning on Saturday, and then we have like a photo walk, and then we have the event at night. So it's a busy day oh, for wow. L.A. If you're in Texas. We're not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no. Aaron's Enjoy your weekend. Busy planning. Is there, for is there a events. barbecue night out or anything? Not yet. Oh, barbecue. I think the whole barbecue is a whole, just the massive night out period, even when during the it's daytime. Like no, I mean, it's at Aaron's place. Uh, it's oh, at my house? No. Wow. I don't know who comes to my house. <laughs> it's private. <laughs> Special. Okay, uh, and uh, other events. Actually, one thing just showed up in the last couple of days. So next Friday, they're doing an unveiling at the Computer History Museum here in uh, in uh, Mountain View, which is just down the street from Google. Um, any of the explorers that traded in their version one glass for version two, they said, you know, we're going to do something really cool with this. We're not going to tell you what it is. And I think a lot of us thought they kind of forgot about it, but uh, it turns out they gave it to some Stanford students who uh, created some sort of exhibit at the Computer History Museum. So uh, on next Friday, they're going to be unveiling it, and about 100 explorers, including Olivia and I, and Cecilia 
Really, are you on? Yeah. Oh, you got in. You got in, Keith. I thought you weren't able to get in. I yeah, a couple of people had I guess uh, declined their RSVPs after they got them, so I was very lucky. Cool. About that. That's part of the reason we changed your well. Plan. You guys there. You just know the right. You guys know the right people to talk to. You, just, you need to introduce me to these people because I only know the wrong people. To Didn't talk you to. get the invite? Well, or did you not if get I had not gotten the invite, uh, you know, directly, I probably would have showed up outside and begged and pleaded until somebody. <laughs> I did get the invite, Stephen. I just I don't live in San Francisco. I didn't even bother. I didn't I want to take a spot like, that somebody else might deserve. My hasn't hit my inbox, and so I clicked the link immediately, and I watched it go from like 20 to 45 registered in like a few minutes, and I was oh. like, oh my god, it, it's frozen, it's frozen. It was like Google I/O all over again. Oh no! Oh, oh wow! Huh. It went through. I, I literally watched them count up to 100 in. I, it had to have been less than half an hour. Um, so, it was oh yeah. Fast. Oh, it was maybe it was maybe like twelve minutes, fifteen minutes. It was nothing. <laughs> no. Like it went super fast because we were talking about it in in another chat, and it was just like, oh, here's my invite if somebody wants to use it, and it was already done. Apparently, yeah, it's it uh, it's a it's a movie we're watching together, uh, right? Oh. Yeah, something like that. It sounds like it may not be such a, such an elaborate thing, but it, there is some. The way that they made the invite sound is that we were getting some sort of a prize for being early explorers, and this was going to, I, I don't yeah. know, I, I thought it was going to be something much bigger, but now it's like movie night. All right. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, though, the nice Theater History with everybody. Museum is really cool. It is definitely worth a visit. It's a great place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think even, yeah. I mean, if they let you wander around, I think that normally costs about 20 bucks anyway, so it's something. Okay. And make sure you ride the uh, Google Street View bike. It's awesome. <laughs> Or at least sit on it. Yeah, I don't think you can ride it. I've I've I went there to go to the museum once and it was closed. That's awesome. Aww. Closed is the yeah, at five, I believe, or something. Cool story, yeah. bro. It was. It was the coolest of stories. <laughs> Do you wanna <laughs> announce what we're doing? Or are we gonna hold off again still? Oh, um so yeah, Google I.O. extended. Um Boom! Announced. Announced. <laughs> there we go. It's, over. it's Done. happening. It's happening. Hang on over. <laughs> <laughs> Only for your first. How many viewers left? Because we've gone for like an hour. Probably. Actually, yeah. we've, almost, we've, been, we've been gaining viewers since the hour passed. I think people started wandering in later on. So we've we've gone for exactly ninety eight percent of the MacBook Air. So that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Hangouts on the Air have a uh, that's, that's a hangout on well, the Air. You know, real quick, Steve, I'll let you plug yourself. Where can people find you in case we we don't get to ask you again? <laughs> <laughs> well, so um. Actually, I, I feel like I'm spreading myself a little too thin with this blogging obsession. Um, I've started a blog that I have not given enough attention to on Beacon Reader, which is a new blog startup um, trying to create a sustainable, independent journalism uh, ecosystem. So beaconreader.com uh, forward slash Stephen dash uh, That's kind of my main personal blog right now. Uh, then, of course, Living Through Glass and Google Glass fans dot com, um, but definitely a lot of awesome new projects coming up soon. Uh, so keep an eye out on my Google Plus for some new blogs coming soon. Very cool. Glad we got glad we got that in there. I'll toss it back now to Aaron. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut off your announcement either. No problem. Oh, it's it's really Libby's announcement. <laughs> yeah, this week I, I, I have this week, but of course. For since since we're like an hour over, <laughs> we're probably gonna <laughs> announce it again next week. <laughs> this is a teaser. Well, more, more details to come. Yes. Yes. If you're we still watching, right? Next a question. You guys have to get the registration page up too. I'm hogging next week. You're not. I'm stealing. Yeah, it. I'm take, I'm gonna take up a lot of time next. You week. know what? Well, I didn't. I didn't host this week, so I'll host next See, week. It's a. It's gonna be a battle between you two about who hosts. So I'll let you figure it out. I'm hosting next week, Cecilia. You are. Yep. It is. It is Aaron's turn. I think it is Aaron's turn. Yeah. Who if you really want to host, you can host. I don't care. I'm just talking right? over you. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. Well, uh, it's been an awesome show, and uh, I'm glad you all hung in there. But yeah, it's been about an hour and a half. So seriously, I got to get back to work. I have a website to launch. <laughs> all right. Cool. Well, thanks, Steve, for joining us. And thank uh, you very much for having me. Cool. And I'll see you guys all next week. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye. I gotta wave here because my camera is messed up. <laughs>